during the uh, Red Dead Redemption uh, spoiler cast, but unfortunately, I haven't played the game, so I cannot see that episode, hear that, or even get anywhere near that where ten foot yeah. pole. It's had, some, to... it's had some good views. I, I, it's, the view count on it's pretty high, so that actually, you know, makes me pretty excited that that people have, you know, the people that have finished Red Dead would like to hear us talk about it. So it's 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 um I will probably be listening to that once I finish Red oh, Dead yeah. Redemption. <laughs> It's, it's definitely holidays. something like I, it's a fun discussion to have, but you, I mean, we spoiled the shit out of it. So, <laughs> so yeah, I better better not even get into that. Yeah. Um, if you if you want to go in as blind as you possibly can at this point, yeah, I, I recommend that. Yeah, and and even worse is because my girlfriend is trying to play the game right now. Gotcha. And she's a bit of a um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? She doesn't contain spoilers. Let's do it no. So right, I, I gotta be really, really careful when I'm talking to her now. Uh, so, let me ask you this, Jeff. Yes. How was your Thanksgiving? Now that we're back into a regularly scheduled podcast. Um, it was good. Uh, I was quiet. Um, just you know, spent time with the family, uh, parents, uh, girlfriend, kids, all that fun stuff. It was it was good. It was quiet. We actually didn't even celebrate it on actual Thanksgiving. Um, <laughs> We celebrated the day before because I happened to have those two days off. Um, All right. So, yeah, it was it was weird because on actual Thanksgiving I was home by myself because girlfriend had to work Black Friday stuff Oof. and I didn't. So and I didn't have the I didn't have my daughter. So it was it was kind of weird. I. I didn't so, do anything, it felt like. <laughs> well, well, let me ask you this, then. Um, did you play any video games? Uh, during the, I the did. Break? Um, I, I didn't, again, I didn't actually play this on Thanksgiving. I played it in between <laughs> Thanksgiving on, uh, on that Wednesday. But I started and finished Hitman 2. Oh, nice. Uh, in one day. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not, if... If you were playing it the way that I played it, it is not a long game. It took okay. me about two and a half sittings. I would say probably between five and six hours. Okay, um, fair enough. But the way I played it, because I, I like just experiencing the levels and seeing what the game has to offer me. So I played it on the easiest difficulty setting, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. I, of course, because it's me. Um, yeah. And I basically, uh, they have where you can essentially just be guided. Like, you can turn on hints, and so you're like, okay, I want to see how this scenario plays out. And okay. it will guide you and give you check like waypoints to go, like, okay, go to this area and get this disguise. Then once you do that, get this disguise. Then, you know, this is where you can have your secret meeting with the the hit that you're trying to take out and everything so it was very good the levels themselves are a gorgeous i was playing an xbox one x so beautiful beautiful game um and it was really fun like the story is kind of nonsensical mm -hmm. um i don't want to spoil it but they pull a um a captain america civil war twist okay which was pretty interesting all right um that's interesting to me now. You got yeah. my interest right now. It, it sets right. up. It sets up the third game because it, it comes like right in the last like thirty seconds of the last cutscene. But um, but the 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 episode or the each it's not episodes anymore because the first game, as you remember, was an episodic yeah. game. It was doled out is a, over the course of about a year. Yeah. As opposed was... to as opposed to this, where you buy this, you spend the sixty dollars, you get the full game. Gotcha. There, you still, it's weird when you put the disc in, it downloads all the episodes separately, <laughs> which I thought uh, was really strange. I'm like, okay, so. Yeah, okay, what the fuck is because this? I, this is basic. If, if I remember correctly, or if I if I figured this out correctly, um, I do believe you can download the prologue for free, which is like a, it's like 20 minutes. Like, you can download that and get that, you know, get that taste of how the story is going to be set up. Um, and then 
the main levels are there's Miami. Uh, there is represent motherfucker. Yep, that mission was actually really cool. It's the one they showed off first with the race car track. Yeah, I know. I saw that. I was like, it, it's it's. Um, so there's Miami. There's Mumbai. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's like suburbia usa it's like a the, connecticut like <laughs> suburb like suburb like the most vanilla thing you can it, think the most of, vanilla, right? but it actually gave me a lot of vibes because they did that at, in um one of the other uh hitman uh blood money i think had a similar like level based uh, in like you know and it's cool like in that level i i dressed up like a realtor and and cornered the 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 guy that one of the guys you have to take out he's like looking to buy this property so i I disguised myself as a realtor and i took him into the basement and just turned around and shot him in the face oh my god here let me take you to the basement i want to show you how good it is isn't really a spoiler because that's not one of it's it's part of one of the setups that you can do but i kind of improvised at the last second so um (laughs) and then the last one the last mission takes place on this island um during this like cult meeting, which was really weird <laughs> but really cool, so I really liked it. Um, I don't like. I didn't play it as I guess this is gonna sound weird, but I didn't play it as intended because mm-hmm. it's one of those games where you want to go back and try out all the different ways to take out a target because there's exactly. probably like five or six different ways per mission. Um, oh, the, the the mission I was forgetting. There's um, there's one where you're in this like coastal town. Gotcha. In like uh, in like the in South America. That one was actually cool because one of the things you can do is dress up like a hippie because you're one of the <laughs> drug mules, and you dress up like a hippie. Oh god. And you like have to like fix this little like souvenir that the the cocaine or in this case super cocaine is in it's literally called super cocaine oh god Ugh. so, yeah. so you it's... so uh, let me ask you this though the yeah. miami episode uh, goes first oh. yeah it goes it goes miami south america mumbai suburb cult <laughs> it's like this listen uh, we want you to start in 1980s Miami with the cocaine deals. Then we want you to go back to Colombia to deal with their shit. And then right. after that, we're going to take you to fucking... Yeah, it's, uh, it's weird. Breaking I mean, Bad it, with fucking man. <laughs> well, like, the story actually, it, it does pick up directly after the end of the first game. Because the, how the first game ends is um, you are going after this, like, secret group. And then you get contracted by the secret group to start doing your work. But you're also working for the ICA, which is the 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 main company that you work for originally and the whole premise of this game is you find out that there's been there's another basically uh subject um similar to you know agent 47 Uh he like you guys grew up together and you realize that he was kind of pulling the strings in the first game the entire time and now you have to hunt him down as well (laughs) as do all this other freelance work and all this stuff. It, it gets really weird and very, like, you know, corporations, espionage, all that kind of stuff. But it's it, it was it's really fun. I, I enjoyed it. I didn't, like, it was kind of a bummer that I beat it so quickly. But it's one of those things I'm, I definitely want to go back and try out some of the crazier, like, different scenarios you can, you know, put, thing, put the game through. I will tell you this. And this is the only thing that I know about Hitman 2. And... Because I saw a video on YouTube, and when I saw that, I was laughing my head off. Just just do yourself this. When you get into the suburbia area, um, grab one of the leaf rackets, put it in the middle of the road, and just see what happens. Okay. I just gonna, I'm just going to tell you that. It's funny as hell. I'll that's, check that's, it out. Just, just, I'll give you that little pointer right there. Um, so besides Hitman 2, uh, anything else? Um, or, or, do you just, or do you just dabble into some other games? I'm just, like... Yeah, I've kind of just been dabbling in other stuff. I um, I, I started playing Destiny again a little bit. Uh-huh. But because Iron Banner was this past week. Yeah, let's let's and not talk about Iron yeah, Banner. Yeah, I, yeah. 
I was like, I'm going to play some Iron Banner and try to rank up. And then I was like, oh, shit, nope. this is why I don't play Iron Banner. That's right. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the game um, right now when it comes to, like, the the light level system, yeah. they put it back to Iron Banner. It's kind of wonky. It's, it's, mean... there's, a, you, there's a much no, more noticeable disparity. Yeah. Especially if you have, like me, have only played, like, the campaign of Forsaken – as opposed to the people that have, you know, that are like 600 light level or something along those lines, you know, in the high 500s. Like, I was like, oh shit, like I was getting my ass handed to me. So, yeah. um, um, the, the thing about, yeah, other than, that... other than mm-hmm. dabbling in Destiny a little bit, I, uh, I started the first Spyro. Okay. Um, I, I like, I never played Spyro back in the day. So, nice. the nostalgia. Doesn't aspect hit. for me is non-existent yeah I'm gonna i imagine. mean it's a damn pretty game i'll, I'll say that much um it, it's so i played all three spyro games i have not played the trilogy right now my girlfriend you have played, played the, trilogy, the remasters so, so it's um i want to see it with my own eyes and see how well, it plays comparatively to the original three games. I mean, um, yeah, I was I have I I literally can't tell you because I never played them. All right, so. but you know, for the most part, you know, it's a it's a really pretty game. You'll enjoy it. Yeah. Um, it's it's weird. Some people like prefer the first Spyro over the second, and some people prefer the third over the second. You know, it's right. it's it's. Fun for everyone, I guess you could say. You know, there's always going to be one Spyro game that people just enjoy over the other one. Uh, for me, it was uh, three. Uh, I like number one. I like number two. I prefer three. I, that's the one that I probably put the most time in it. Right. Um, but you know. All right. I'll well, maybe maybe I'll maybe I'll bounce around a little bit and give some of the other ones a shot to see, you know. Because the the first one seems really basic, but I know they were all you know they were PS one games, so I'm not expecting like revolutionary gameplay. I'll tell you this: Do you play Banjo and Kazooie when you were? Um... Yes, that was okay. more my speed because I had an N sixty four. So gotcha. So the second and third have that more play style on it. Oh, okay, so okay. more of like a, a quasi open world. Because the, the first, well, the first one, from what I can, it's it's just levels. Like you, you know, you have a hub world, and then you go to levels, and then you go to the next hub world, and then you have levels, and it. I meant it more like in the sense of it's much more things to collect and stuff like that. Oh, okay. I'm not. So, I actually that that be great. I I'm I much rather might get you know get my. So, so but yeah, you, you, you'll you'll, you'll I'll, enjoy I'll get to it. It's one of those games I'm not like, oh my god, I need to play Spyro. Like I'm gonna just play some Spyro. Like I saw a, you know Dalton in the group chat um, when he did, you know made the decision not to not to join us this evening. Um, he uh, Make he was saying that he was playing that, so I'm like, oh good, like, that you know he'll, he might he'll have a better it. perspective on it than I would. So yeah, he'll he'll probably enjoy it um, a lot. Uh, uh, let's see what else. I again just kind of been dabbling. I did dabble into some Fallout seventy six. Um, yeah. I I want to save a lot of my thoughts for it until we can get everybody <laughs> on here. Yeah, yeah. likewise, man. Um, um, it. I yeah. I'll just say I played some. I have opinions on it. I will wait to share those opinions <laughs> until next time. Yep. Yeah, it's a. It is a very. It's a very peculiar... divisive game. Yeah, it's a very peculiar situation that they have right now with that game. Yeah. Bethesda, so, of all studios, is in a of very all, right? Like, spot. I can understand Ubisoft doing this. I can understand EA doing this. I right. can understand, uh, you know. It's weird to see a company as generally non, generally a can't miss kind of developer. Kind of hit the mark on this one, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, they didn't hit the mark on this one. But yeah. we'll again, we'll get into that, you know, next Later episode. On. Probably. Um, I'm trying to think what else I played because I like I I just threw threw a bunch of shit at the wall and decided and s- <laughs> see what's because I'm, I'm in I'm in a weird rut right now. I it's like you want to play but you don't know what you want right. to play. Right. <laughs> like I want yeah. Like I I own all of the games that have like come out in the last like three weeks. 
but I don't like none of them are really grabbing me and maybe that's just post Red Dead syndrome because I tried getting back into Assassin's Creed okay and I know you you were you were going to ask me about this on the show um so I'm kind of getting into it now Assassin's Creed Odyssey is one of my favorite games of 2018 okay but, but right now, after putting so much time into Red Dead in no, such a short amount of time, I don't really want a game like that right now. Gotcha. You want something quick and easy that you can just pop into your into your system, play it for a couple of hours, and you're done. And and, and right. it's not like you're supposed to have this investment of spending five, six, seven hours to just do one little quest in the game, and then you have this whole thing that you have to finish. Exactly. I, I get that, you know. It's, and that's it's... why I think I liked Hitman so much, because each level was about 45 minutes. I could, you know, focus on that one level, you know, mm -hmm. take a little bit of a break, move on to the next one, do the same thing. Same thing with Spyro. Spyro requires, like, zero thought, you know. And Destiny, I'm just, you know, Destiny's one of those games, like, I've played so much of it now, I just kind of can go through the motions, do a couple, you know, weekly milestones or daily milestone, and be like, all right, I'm done with Destiny for today. Yeah. Like, so yeah, I, I I think yeah I think it's one of those things where I don't want to really try to invest all of my gaming time into one game right now, and gotcha. I feel if I really get back into Assassin's Creed, that's how I'm gonna feel I need to do is I'm just gonna have to sit there and, and grind 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 until I finish it, and I don't really want to do that. Um, it, it trust me, it's it's uh. It's and again, like obviously, Assassin's Creed Odyssey is one of my favorite games of this year. Like it's in my top ten. It's most likely in my top five. Gotcha. Hey, um, trust me, it's it's understandable what you're going through. I went through that in about before uh, the holiday break because I was playing I was playing Destiny. You know me. I'm, uh, it's yeah. uh, it's it's like me and Rob are like, okay, let's play one game and we're gonna play the entire fucking year. No questions asked. And you're like, okay, I gotta stop. So. I was playing this and going, ah, I'm done with this thing. I got Luna's Hell. I got rid of Spratzor. I, uh, I finally got like most of the difficult shit that I needed to get. I got Thunderlord. I basically did everything that I could. I did get Thunderlord. I did do that little quest because that was like easy as shit. Yeah, I know, right? It's like, like you would think that Bungie would have done something better with that fucking quest, but well, you know, it was kind of a holiday. gimme for the holidays. Like I can I... understand where they were going with it. So. I was thinking, you know what, let me play something else, you know. So uh, my friend Lee, he likes playing Blackout. Like, he's enjoying Blackout, like, beyond yeah. belief. So I said to myself, you know what, let me play something with him. Let me just enjoy it. And I suck. I mean, I'm I, terrible I am... At, I'm terrible at Battle Royale. I'm terrible is... at multiplayer games in general. No, but, like, this I know, is... You're like, not, though. But like, you're not I, terrible I, at... Mul you're not terrible at, like short-term competitive multiplayer like you know uh, crucible or something like that in destiny but i suck at this i mean i <laughs> I, I, I i am absolutely horrendous in this but, like, but the i don't know is... how to glide I, I have problems gliding into okay that's pretty game. bad so that the, me okay so the question is then yes you suck at it but are you still having fun yes and no okay if I play by myself, it is the most annoying thing that it can happen to me. I don't like it. It's, it's you're like I don't want to do this. But if you're playing with friends because friends are there, it makes it better. Yeah, yeah. Because because the thing is with this, you know, when you're playing either solo or with quads in blackout with random people. Yeah. You have absolutely no communication whatsoever between them. You have no idea what they're doing. You're just trying to survive. Yeah, if you're playing with randoms, absolutely. But yeah, if you're playing with your friends, you're joking, you're you know making fun of each other, you're being goofy. Like, it adds a layer that is not present otherwise. Yeah, like for example, like I was dealing with them the other day, and we got into a situation where we're like trying to survive, and I'm like, oh shit, I need a gun. I picked up the gun from the back, but there's only one bullet in it. <laughs> so I was like, okay, this game hates me. All right, and then I just got like knocked up across a distance so i was like all right. right i'm done but besides blackouts besides destiny i finally got my switch yes Thank i was gonna you, i was waiting i saved it for last but the thing <laughs> i have i guess i've played the most of since red dead is pokemon let's go let's go yeah it's i have a, a lot of thoughts about 
Pokemon Let's Go, uh, Eevee and Pikachu. I, um, I honestly, like, as much as I want to hear about them, because I do, and as much as I'd like to talk about Pokemon, we really need Dalton for this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, because if anybody wants to talk do. about Pokemon, if we start talking about Pokemon and he's not here, I will feel a little guilty. He'll be pissed off, bro. He'll, 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 he'll I mean, score. he'll be able to give his thoughts. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I feel like this is weird because, like, everything, it's like, oh, we want to talk about this, but we want to wait for these people. <laughs> no, what I, what I meant by saying that about Pokemon Let's Go is that I have so many thoughts about it, and since I play Jello, Jello, uh, yes, recently as of, you know, want to say March, April of this okay, year. Okay, so it's been less than, like, six months almost. So I played it, and I played the entirety of it, and I go, you know what? I have that memory fresh in the back of my mind going, okay, as I'm playing this game and I see all of this just recreated in such a way that it's... It's gorgeous. It, uh, it's not that it's gorgeous because cause the, the, the graphics are, are you know, they're, they're fine. They're fine with, with, for what Nintendo wants about this game. It's... It's the, probably the most... Faithful recreation of Pokemon Yellow that I have seen ever. Yeah, I mean, it's probably one of the best recreations of a previous Pokemon game ever. So, when you're playing this game, and anybody that played Pokemon Yellow as a kid, you know, your imagination goes wild. You know, you, you, you look at certain scenes in this game, and you imagine what it would look like. When you're playing this game, Right. It's like Nintendo or Game Freak went into your mind, plucked what they thought this should look like, and put it into the game. Right. Like the scene for me with the SS Anna, where yes, where I and I love that for certain scenes in the game they do canned cutscenes, like exactly. actual cutscenes. Yeah. So for me, when the SS Anna scene came out, uh, I remember oh. back in, I remember back in when I was a kid and playing Pokemon Yellow. And I you, remember. In it, I was remember waving. It... Yeah, I remember waving at the fucking uh, ship as a kid, going, "Oh man, if I was there, I'd be waving at there and going bye, or just looking forlornly into the ship." When I saw that, bro, I was like, "Man, they, they, it's like Nintendo read my mind." I was like, "Fuck!" Like, right. it, it was the most probably the, the best nostalgic moment that I ever had in the game as of right now. Don't get me wrong; it had some flaws. So, but I will leave that into when we have the discussion with Dalton and everybody in the group. Yeah, because there are some flaws in the game that 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 really, as a Pokemon player that's been playing this this fucking franchise for what twenty five years now, twenty years, yeah, twenty years. Right. There's there's things that they miss, things that they did correctly. So I'll leave that for the discussion. But sounds good. As, so if right now I'm enjoying the hell out of the game. I was going to say, I I actually, I, you know, we talked about it in the group chat. I wasn't going to get one because I'm like, oh, that seems dumb and gimmicky. I bought a Pokeball Plus yesterday. You'll enjoy it. It's a good, it's a good, especially. It's actually, yeah, I played, I played about an hour of it. Um, I just, I just got to self company. Um, after, um, after you take out yeah. the, after you get snorlax and everything yeah. you go to the self company so yeah after you take out snorlax you go to celadon city i forgot city. about that stupid teleporter puzzle though oh my god don't even get me started on that it's one of my least favorite i it was one of my least favorite parts when i originally played these games and now it's and like it, oh god it's... i forgot how much i hated this god like but yeah that's where i'm at right now so i'm right. playing through ev um i couldn't just find the pokeball plus by itself so i splurged and bought the Pikachu bundle. <laughs> <laughs> All so right. I have, <clears throat> excuse me, I have both games now. Um, once I finish Eevee and kind of, you know, I'd like to see if I can round out the Pokedex. I would actually really like to do that because I've never done that in a Pokemon game. Go for um, it. I, I, I will tell you something that you have to do. At least in this specific game where the Pokedex is so small comparatively to every, every other Pokemon game because... This is probably the one that anyone it's that wants to complete. It's the easiest to manage because there's only the 151. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, trust me, it wasn't. The, it was not fun doing the Sun and Moon. A thousand. Well, yeah, because isn't there like 700 something now? It's 820 something like that. Not Christ. counting. 
not counting um the 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 special Pokemon's not counting uh Mega Evolutions oh, like not the, counting like the Alolan versions and the Mega Evolutions yeah it's like eight hundred oh, it's just fuck it's that sorry <laughs> yeah when Generation A comes out like the the next generation of Pokemon they're probably gonna add another hundred of those so there's yeah but that. the nice thing is it'll be on the Switch so you won't have yeah. to worry about it too much so besides Pokemon besides uh you know the, the, yeah, the, I was gonna say. Besides all of that stuff, that is, I think that about that about rounds out my list of stuff. All right. Uh, I was so, going to get Dark Siders three, but then I read the reviews today. And you're like, and eh. I'm gonna it. wait. I yeah. still want to play it because Dark Siders, the first two are some of my favorite games, um, franchise wise. It's it's a great franchise. I just, I'm curious to see if it's just with the amount of high fucking quality games that we've gotten this year if it's yeah. if the reviewers scores are low because it's it's like super it's either you love it or you don't mm -hmm. like it was getting nines it was getting fours like it was getting <laughs> mostly was like sevens and eights like kind of middle of the road which seven and eight still a good game it's not a bad game by any means i just don't know if it's the reviewers being like, well, I just played Red Dead, and now this Darksiders is kind of tainted because of it. Or if it's just, it's a it's a type of game that is kind of from a bygone era now. Like, like, let me ask you this, and this is the thing that just makes me laugh whenever it happens, you know. Somebody tells me, goes into reviews and says, oh, Red Dead Redemption, 10, 9.5, 10. Yeah. Oh, I must play this game. Right. Never plays it. Just right. sit, it's, it's sitting in their, uh, you know, gaming room and sitting on their shelf and they yep. never played it. But it's like, oh, I bought it because it was a 10. Okay. Skyward Sword for the Wii U when it came out. Yep. Oh, 10. I haven't played it. I never uh, played it. Uh, not, not I never me. bought just, it, though, just, but just, I never played it. Just giving you an example. Right. And yet, you see, oh, Darksiders 3. Oh, it's a 6? Oh, oh, no. I My gaming... Royalty cannot touch that. Yeah. Uh, only tens and nines are available for me, and yet it's probably one of the best games that you probably can play, and you probably will right. enjoy. Right, and that's and that's but what it's... I, you know, I there's there's people that I follow on Twitter that were like tweeting while they were like reviewing the game basically, and, you know, he was basically saying like, it's a good game, it's not what I want it to be. But, but it's still a decent it game. It's still you know? a good game. It is like it is worth your time to play it. And that's and that's the it's it's funny nowadays um like you know like you were kind of hitting at like just the the sheer you know turning down your nose at a game just because it doesn't hit 10s and 9s that's and everything exactly. like that where everybody likes what they like. Everybody likes different things. That's why there are, you know, hundreds of video games, hundreds mm -hmm. and thousands and hundred thousands of video games out there over the course of the last, you know, 30 years. You know, everybody likes their different stuff. If, the, you know, you might like stuff from previous, you know, from retro games. You might, you know, like for me, I grew up on the PS2. So there's stuff, you know, I was listening to a thing. It's like, uh, oh, in the, you know, the PS4 is five years old. It, do you consider it's the best PlayStation that's ever PlayStationed? And I was like, no. The PS2 for me is better because yeah. it had more memories for me. Gotcha. It's... But but in, in, in just because a game gets a low score or, a, a, you know, an average score doesn't mean shit. And, and that's the thing, and that, though. And that, that actually goes just as far. I, this, this also applies to Fallout 76. Exactly. You know, like, it, you, just because somebody reviews the game and didn't like it, doesn't mean that you won't, uh, like, it. You won't like it, you know? Yep. Uh, like, just look at the line of the That's best why I wish games. more games had demos nowadays. Ex oh, dude, you have no idea. It's like, it, it's the one thing that makes me miss, like, the old magazines from the old, from the days of old, where like they give you, like, a, and stuff, yeah, like that? stuff like that. You could or just, you could... like, or the old school Xbox Live Arcade, where exactly. everything had a fucking demo. Exactly. Yeah. It's like you can only get a demo now on fucking GameSpot or GameStop. Yeah, and like, like, I think I think Try Before uh, You Buy is is would be fantastic in this era, but unfortunately, it's not. You know. Like let let me tell you, let me show you right now the top ten best selling games of October 2018. Okay. okay. Call of Duty Black Ops 4. Yeah. Number one. Number two. Red, Red Dead, Dead Redemption. Redemption. Assassin's Creed Odyssey. 
NBA 2K19, Super Mario Party, Soul Calibur 6. That's that's that for me. It's the one of those goes like, wait, what? FIFA 19. Obviously, it's FIFA. Everybody in their fucking mother plays FIFA. Marvel Spider-Man. That for me, I need to go back and play that game. I need, I really need to play that game. I and, have all. Uh, I have. I've been. I bought. You know, I had the season pass because I bought the console and it came with the season pass for the game or the expansion pass, or whatever. I um have. Uh, I've downloaded the first two episodes. I think at this point, since the next one's. It's almost December already. I should just and the buy. the next one wait. hits in December. I'm gonna wait and play all three of them simultaneously. You know what? I think what I'll do is I'll think I'll wait. And I, I know I'm gonna get a lot of flack from Goose for this, but I think I'll wait for the definitive edition of Smart oh, Spider Man for the PS4. That with all the episodics comes out and all the DLC they'll, is. Yeah, out. I was gonna say you know they'll probably do that. So I know I know how they are. You know, like so. And number nine, Man of 19, and number ten, your Bread and Butter, WWE, 2K19. So, out of those games, you know, there's one... There's one game, maybe two games, that get a 9 and 10s. You know, Red Dead Redemption and Marvel Spider-Man. That's probably the yeah. two. Okay? Out of the rest... Well, a, Assassin's Creed got 9s. Yeah. Not 10s, but 9s. Yeah. Alright, so Assassin's Creed, you can add to the 9s. But then we have... Probably an eight. We call it Duty Black Ops, NBA 2K19, Soul Calibur 6. I know those two got like between eights, stuff like that. FIFA 19 and Man of NFL and WWE got eights across the board. Um, Super Mario Party, you know, a game that everybody plays or has played at some point. And people say, oh, it's just a seven, it's a six. It's not really a good game, but it's fun. It's right. It's probably the most fun you can have with a group of four people playing in your house that you ever had in a while. Okay? And you should enjoy those games. You know, you shouldn't just turn up your nose into the air and say, oh, I'm not going to deal with those games because I only play the royalty of games. You know, no, just play what you'd like. And, and if that game is, which actually comes into the second part, just because a game that you like doesn't get high scoring scores. You know, doesn't make it a bad game. You know, right. um, I have so many people that, that that get pissed off because oh, you know, oh, Assassin's Creed should have gotten a ten. I'm like, but it didn't, and and, and it doesn't matter. It's and it's rude. an annual franchise, so so be glad that you that the game was really good enough to get a nine, as opposed to, you know, what was the the one that just really sucked? Um, uh, the one for the Native American. Huh? Uh, the Assassin's Creed game that was in the, that was set in 1776 with the Native Americans. Assassin's stuff like. Creed Three. Yeah. yeah. The, like uh, it's like that one was like fuck. Uh, like, like I liked it, but it was just so many wonky guys controllers at some points. So was like fuck. But you could enjoy it. it. Doesn't have to be the best game out of everybody. It doesn't have to be the the like the greatest of all time. But you can enjoy it. Um, like for example, uh, let's say I'm going back and playing some of the older games. I'm playing uh, Shadow of the Colossus. It's a great game. Does it have its issues? Yes. Is it, does it have a wonky camera? Hell yes. Does the horse doesn't know how to fucking walk? Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pissing you off with a fucking horse, man. It's like, oh, press triangle so that I can walk a little bit faster. But it's like. Like barely press the triangle again, so we can walk a little bit much more faster. Right. Like press the oh, triangle. Yeah, the, the... Oh, it goes in fucking full gallop. Like, bro, stop! <laughs> you made me piss. You made me miss like like eight times the fucking exit. So it has issues, but it's a wonderful game. It's a really enjoyable game. You know. Yeah. It's not my 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 go to of the year, but you know. It's, it's up there. It's up there. Um. Another one that yeah, I, gotta I, mean, go, it's... I gotta go back to playing um, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Like, like the Gustavo's on my case about that. Yeah, um, you should finish that. It, it, it's it's a wonderful game. That's my thing. Is is right now? Like, obviously, I'm playing Pokemon, but I don't know. I don't know what I want to go to next. 
you're in a crossroad, right? You're like, you, there's like five, six different choices, and you're thinking. Uh... Well, a lot of the stuff, and a lot of the stuff that I have to play, I don't have like, I don't really have a desire to go finish it. Finish it. <laughs> if that like, I don't know. It's tough. It's weird. It's like a really weird spot that I'm in right now. Huh. Uh, actually, uh, I was just checking some news right now. Guess what just uh, popped in my feed? What's that? Uh, apparently, Blizzard is on the works for playing for creating Diablo 4. It's called Yeah, Nine. yeah, I did see that. Um, I saw that yesterday, I think. But yeah, they there's... There's definitely... There's definitely some credence to that. And, I, and it's, it's a no-brainer that they're making Diablo 4. I don't think they presented it very well <laughs> with the with the Diablo Immortal mobile stuff. Uh, that that was um I, I I don't know how to feel about that. Like I, I understand the point of view of the developers trying to do something new. I understand that part. I don't think it was the correct timing to do it, especially since they have not said anything about Diablo four. Well, actually, yeah. you know what? Let me ask you this then. Do you think that's going to be any of those news of Diablo 4 from Blizzard or gaming news in general from Blizzard from E3 for next year? Um, I, I would say probably. Like, I mean, I hope that they do this because after, you know, and this is what, what the next segue is, is after Sony said that they're not going to be in E3 next year, you know, the other developers are going to be thinking, you know, we got to fill it up with some space now because we don't have the big baller helping us out with news now. Like, it's going to be weird, man. It's E3 now is going, like, I, I've been kind of wanting to talk about this for a while, but E3 now is going to be really fucking weird. <laughs> like, we're going to be seeing, it, it's going to be like a la carte now. It's like before. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like it was, uh, they were, a lot of uh, news outlets that I was reading uh, kind of equated it to a few years ago where, um, where it was like E3 was almost going to shut down mm -hmm. and it, and like everything was kind of piecemeal. They were all still kind of in the same week, but they were all in different like buildings and it was really spread out and stuff like that. I have a feeling it's, we're going to get that kind of same vibe. Um, oh where God. everything's going to be spread out in, in the big question is, you know, Sony's is usually the, la like, obviously Nintendo's direct is usually the next day, but yeah. Sony's is the last really big mm -hmm. conference, press conference, um, for that week. So do we think that Microsoft's going to try to slide into that spot? Cause I totally do. I, I think that's going to happen. If I think... they're smart, that's what they do. Look, if Microsoft... They forego their Sunday one that they use, Sunday afternoon and mm -hmm. save for Monday evening. I'll tell you this. I think Microsoft should go boss the walls. They're, in... they're going to have to. They, they, this is their opportunity. Either, either they're going to show the new Xbox or at least announce it formally. Um, or they are going to just come out of the gate swinging with all of the all these studios that they've been buying up every single one of them needs to be represented and working on something it, that looks fucking amazing like that's what i'm what what, what yeah. I, I was like thinking about that the other day when i was like thinking okay so sony's not gonna be in e3 so that's gonna open up space not only for microsoft but for developers and for other gaming you know companies to put on into the show because la this year when E3 came around, Sony uh, had four different areas for The Last of Us 2, okay? They had four different venues to show the different um, ideas that they had for their uh, IPs, right? One was for, well, was for The Last of Us, the other one was for um, um, Shadows of... Um, no, the, the the samurai one, the one where... Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, they had one for... <sighs> Shadows Don't Die Twice, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sek well, no, Se Sekiro was Xbox. They were, That showed got shown versus the Xbox. Uh, so they showed, last year Sony showed, Last of Us 2, Ghost of Tsushima... Damn it. 
It was it wasn't God of War. I know that for sure. No, Spider Man. Spider Man. That's one. Um, there was a fourth. Oh, Days Days Gone. And Days Gone. So they had four different like like sets for that kind of thing. I can imagine Microsoft doing something like that. Yeah, they're gonna like you said. They're gonna have to come out of the gate swinging. And I would love to see like every single developer being represented on a booth for Microsoft. Yeah. Because I feel like they should do that. I feel like they should. If they're gonna re- reveal the, Nint- the the new Xbox, they should have um, something that like let's say for example, let's say that they they reveal the new Microsoft Xbox, right? But let's say that the controller is compatible with the Xbox uh, S and, and Xbox One X. Uh, yeah. They could put booths booth on to the fucking show that show people that can play it and use the controller during that show. You know, to get them hyped up for the next console, you know, like right. things that can make it so that like people get like really behind Microsoft on this, you know, like I, I know I shared a lot about it. You know, I, I feel like, yeah, it's just giving goodwill. But if you represent your goodwill to create decent games. Well, I community. see I, I've been really I've been slowly and not overtly playing everything that i can on my xbox one x <laughs> hey, there's something wrong with it it's just just like it's it's just it's weird because nobody is on that bandwagon with me like a couple of my friends that were buying consoles for black friday i tried with everything i could to get them to buy xbox or to have people <laughs> to play with on xbox but you know and and i understand like this generation it was sony it everybody was sony but i'm I just – the more that I've played on the console, the Elite Controller is far and beyond better than my scuff that I bought. Yeah. Um, and I just like – obviously, the games look better because it's an X, but mm-hmm. I just like the system better. And I guess I it's it's part of the built-in like legacy that I had had there because I played everything on the 360 back in the day. So I have this mountain of you know gamer score and – all this stuff that I've built up with the Xbox brand. Exactly. Now, in, in terms of exclusive, Sony is far and beyond better. I know, but the thing is this, though. Like, if Microsoft... But I can't tell you, like, because I've been, you know, I picked up Red Dead on the, the Xbox, and I'm like, man, I really wish I could have played God of War and Spider-Man on an Xbox, because A, would have given me a reason to play through them again, because I'd already played them on a PS4, but... And obviously, I know that's never going to happen, but it's just, it's strange. I... With Sony now uh, backing out of E3, it gives me more interest in to, you know, yeah. kind of seeing what Microsoft is doing. I'll tell you this, though, and this is the thing that makes me – like, I'm going to ask you this then. So are you going to buy Kingdom Hearts on the Xbox or are you going to buy Kingdom Hearts for the PS4? I'm still on the fence. Gotcha. Right, fair enough. Um, have they said anything about Final Fantasy VII? Was it going um... – did they say that it was first for PlayStation and then going into Microsoft, or they have not made any announcement for that? They haven't made. I don't think so. I I, I thought I might have. Maybe I was confusing it with Final Fantasy 15. But because I know one of the Final Fantasies can play on the Xbox, I don't remember. Say wait, say that again. Uh, for Sorry, the final I'm... for the Final Fantasies, like 15, you can play on the Xbox, right? Yeah, 15's on the Xbox. That's well. that's what I was like. They are they are putting 10, 10 to 12, um, I think seven even. There's a bunch of ones that they're putting on the Xbox eventually. But yeah, I mean it's it's gonna be really interesting. I yeah I'm still on the fence whether I want to get Kingdom Hearts for the Xbox or. PlayStation. Well, my buddy's getting it for the PlayStation on our game shared account because Kingdom Hearts is like one of his favorite. Fr- he has a Kingdom Hearts tattoo on his chest. <laughs> so, regardless, I'm getting it on the PS4. I just don't know if I also want to buy my own copy for the Xbox and play it on the Xbox. Oh. I think it would be really weird to play Kingdom Hearts game on the Xbox, though. Look, uh, I just remember something funny that happened to me. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine and. He was asking me about the Sony uh, PlayStation uh, mini console that was coming out. And 
he's an Xbox fan, like fanatic, and he goes, I don't need that shit. And I go, well, don't you like PlayStation ones? Didn't you have one as a kid? Like, yes, I know, but I don't need that. And I go, why? Because Microsoft, because Microsoft, I don't need a mini console. I can just go to my Xbox One X and get all my games for free, motherfucker. <laughs> because of the whole retro, um, uh, what do you call it, the, the backwards compatibility of the Microsoft. Uh, and I was laughing, man. I was like, man, th- this guy is like really hating fucking Sony at times. But hey, right. it works for them. It works wonderfully for them because of that, you know backwards compatibility that they have with all their right. 360 and, and Xbox. Well, is it Xbox 360 games or is it Xbox and Xbox 360 games? It's There are some original Xbox games that are backwards compatible. Okay, just, I just, just wanted to make sure. It's just, yeah, it's select titles. But, like, some pretty big ones like Morrowind and Knights of the Old Republic and stuff like that. So. Hey, that's good. That's good. So, uh, I mean, there's... There's, yeah, there there are absolutely, and you know we've talked about this before. There are absolutely pros and cons to every system. Yeah, um, and you play, you and I I kind of always said this, and it's actually the kind of mantra of the old video game site I used to work for. But it's play games, not consoles. Exactly. Like, no, the, enjoy what you want to enjoy, where you want to enjoy it, how you want to enjoy it, how you want to enjoy it. Exactly. So, I think that's a good place to end the evening on, wouldn't you? Hell yeah. Well, thank you, as always, for joining us um, on the AEG show. I can be found on Twitter at JB underscore AEG. White Sun can be found on Twitter at White Sun underscore AEG. Um, we, we did have a, a race last night. How'd that go for you, White Sun? Uh, I ended up six. I'll you did, leave, you, I'll shall leave it at you that. Were, you were doing well there for a little bit. I think you were in fourth for a, a Stint, I, I was in four for the majority of the first half of the race. I, I thought I was doing good, but I just Bleak Goose is a monster when he's fucking on on a roll. When he's when he's on point, he is like, on point. Roll like that guy is like, uh, and this is the thing that I, I want to touch about of the AEG race series is that yep, yep. Like, we had the first race last night. Um, Dalton won for his class. We need him to fucking play every single race because the guy is like amazing when it comes to, to racing so i want to say at that game it's, so, it's ridiculous so it's like i'm like oh i'm sorry well, this is for me for dalton like i'm sorry dude like like you tell like me like you're telling me oh you know you should play like hey look i suck at racing okay don't make me the one that's like oh it's white zone racing oh we don't want to see him. no no we want to see the good guy and we want to see dalton racing every single week that we can on this stupid thing like, if right. he has to handicap himself and, and to play with one fucking hand, I don't care. I want him right. to play every single time. Because it, it's fun. It, it, it's fun when you see that, you're, that your buddy is, like, completely dominating the field. And you're going, man, this guy's fucking good. Right. But, and, but, yeah. But, yeah. It, 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 but it was it was fun. I, I enjoyed hosting. I think I need to loosen up a little bit more. I, felt, I, I feel like I felt a little stilted and kind of got some feedback about it, but... Like I said, by you know, by race five or three or whatever, I'll, I'll be I'll be talking like good old Jr. from WWE. So. Like this, like let me like this. I was talking to a friend. Oh my God, he killed him! No, he killed him! That no, car is broken in half. Dude, dude, Jeff, the thing that I was telling you about before the race going, I was going. Welcome to the AEG Grand Prix, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we'll be having a wonderful race of just shitty ass white son not knowing how to fucking turn on a chicane. Oh, that's horrible, horrible people. Just, just, just enjoy. Just let it out. Just, just be fun with oh, it. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have some fun with it for sure. <laughs> it's like, but, I, um... I, mean, I know the Dalton wants to host at the same time as you, and I, I understand that. I get that, you know. But I feel like he should race, you know. Yeah, it'll be fun. Well, it'll be all right. We'll hey, figure it out. If he wants to, he can just race while, while hosting at the same time. If he wants, if he wants, <laughs> if he wants, if he to, wants have to have, have a, a handicap, handicap, try doing can that. Do with that, okay. So, but yeah, so um, race two will be next Sunday uh, at eight thirty on uh, on our Twitch channel, uh, which is Average Everyday Gaming on Twitch, um, and you can follow us the the Average Everyday Gaming on Twitter at Average Gaming Seventeen. Um, but until next week, hopefully we'll have Goose and Dalton back on so we can talk some Fallout slash Bethesda and some Pokemans. Um, I... And I'm gonna figure out what I want to play this week, and maybe I'll have something new to talk about. So hey, you know. Glad to hear you, man. Yeah. But uh, until next week, we will see you later. Thanks for joining us.